OBS settings can be a pain to deal with, but don't worry about it because we're gonna go through them today. And if you need to skip around, there are chapter markers down below that you can just kind of just click around. Let's do it. Now, when you first open this up, you're probably gonna be a little tiny bit overwhelmed, but don't be because most of this stuff you're not gonna need unless you're a very specific use case. The only things that you do need from this channel are obviously your language settings. You wanna get that right. Uh, and also your theme. Your theme can be whatever you want it to be. I actually really like the Yami default theme, but there's also the Acre theme, which is very blue and black. There's also the Rachne theme, which is very, very teal. But you just really need to go through here and figure out what you want to do. I personally like the Yami theme. I think it's a good balance of not overly blinding, not extremely red and blue, and I just personally like it. I also keep the automatically check for updates on startup option checked because I don't want to keep up with OBS's website all the time. It's really convenient when they just hit you as soon as you open up the program with all of their new updates and all of their new patch notes. It's just super easy and you just hit update and it's all good. Most of these settings you're probably not going to need or care about. The only one that you might care about is this automatically record when streaming. So basically, if you really need to not press another button down here, the start recording button and start streaming button. If you just do not want to forget to press this start recording button, you can do automatically record when streaming. That's up to you. The rest of this is really not important. You can go through these one by one if you feel like it, but I'm not trying to make this video 35 minutes explaining the little nuances between, you know, the one person out of 500 that will use any of those settings. So once you do that, make sure you hit apply and then head on over to the stream set. This setting is super important because this setting is the setting that you use to tell OBS where you're sending your footage, where you are streaming to. So basically you'll go up here and you'll pick a service. There's, you know, there's custom, there's Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Restream, Twitter. Uh, you can show all, which will get you a lot of very weird and very interesting things. If this, if any of this is for you, then, you know, you have the ability to click it. Uh, but otherwise I just, I'm just a normie and stream to YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and go back down to YouTube click that button. Most of the time, you're going to have the ability to connect your account. By connecting your account, I mean you're just going to hit that button and you're going to log in and it's just automatically going to sync everything together. And it's going to be nice and easy. Now, I can promise that there's going to be several of these guys who don't let you do that. And in that case, you're probably going to click it and it's probably going to come up with another bar that says stream key. And you're going to need to go find that stream key. It should be pretty visible in your settings or your account or something like that of whatever the service is you're using. You just need to go in there, copy it. Don't show it to anybody and then paste it in that in that location and you should be good. You can ignore the streaming setting recommendations. These bit rates are not going to be correct most of the time. I know that although I can stream at 51,000 kilobytes per second, there's literally no point to doing so. So thank you for the recommendation. Click apply if you need to. Next thing you need to do is go to output, click that. And you're gonna have probably the simple layout at first. Uh, you, you're not gonna want that. Let's go ahead and hit output mode and go to advanced. This is where you're gonna get a lot more freedom to fine tune things. And although it may look overwhelming, I'm gonna go through it quickly with you and help you pick the best settings at least generally the best settings. First thing that you need to know is the encoding options. There's going to be most likely two, but if you only see one, it's going to be the X264. That is because the X264 is your CPU doing all of the work. Your NVENC is your NVIDIA graphics card that's a 1000 series or higher doing the streaming load instead of your CPU. This is important because your CPU tends to process things slower than the dedicated NVENC card on your graphics card. So if you have this option, you should definitely, definitely use it. Now you might see an additional option here. It may be something called FSR. That is AMD's platform. I do not have a tutorial for you on that because I do not own an AMD card. Uh, so I will probably recommend some other tutorial for that in the description below. But for now, 
If you have an NVIDIA card, go ahead and click that. Some of these settings down here, again, look ridiculously complicated, especially since the newest OBS update added different presets and different tuning and multi-pass mode. So your rate control, you can leave it CBR. Your bit rate is really going to be determined based on your internet speed and what quality you're looking to upload. If you are running anything on Twitch, then you're probably gonna want to have a bit rate of 6,500 because this is also the unofficial official cap of Twitch's bit rate. You can run an 8,000 kilobytes per second bit rate and that should be just fine too. That tends to be pretty good quality even if you're running something like 4K. So I would probably recommend if you have a very strong internet connection doing something like 6,500 to 8K bit rate. But if you needed to lower it a little bit more, you certainly can. You can actually go down to 4,500 and that is also a decent quality and most of the time what you'd use on Twitch anyways in order for your viewers to have the best viewing experience. So if you're unsure about your internet connection, it's better to go lower bit rates and not have to worry about your, your audience members being like, hey, yo, your stream is super laggy because nobody wants to watch a laggy stream, but they will deal with it if it's the image quality isn't as good, but it's consistent. For me, I stream to YouTube and the bit rates are a bit higher there. They don't really have a cap. That's why earlier I was recommending I do 51,000. That is unnecessary. I typically choose 10,000 kilobytes to stream at. Your keyframe interval is gonna be a two. I'm not gonna go into the re reasons for that. It's just widely accepted that this should be a two. So, and maybe a future video I can break down every individual setting based on what it does exactly. But just trust me on this, you're gonna want it to leave it as a two. For your preset, this again is the experimentation part. I am going to experiment with good quality. I have found that my system probably shouldn't run at the best possible quality when I'm doing my stream, but a good quality is gonna be fine. Basically, the slower you go, the higher quality, but the more taxing it's going to be on your system. Basically, pick one, experiment with it. If you're seeing a lot of drops in frame rate, then you can always just go back up to a medium quality. And if you have to, you can do a low quality. For tuning, I would probably recommend a high quality. Now for the multi-pass mode, this is, this is new. You're gonna wanna experiment with this a little bit. Basically, the more passes that it gets, the higher quality it's going to be. But of course, that's gonna be more resources taxed on your GPU. So I would again recommend that you just kind of sit in the middle on this, go quarter resolution. If you find that you're having some issues, and again, you can go back down to single pass, uh, you're gonna need to experiment. It's not even been two months since we've had these settings. So there's probably gonna be some bugs that are gonna be fixed over time. So just make sure that you're testing whatever works best for your stream. Uh, you may have to stream multiple times just to figure this out, but it's worth it knowing what's gonna get you the consistent quality. I would keep my profile on high if I were you. And for look ahead and psychovisual tuning, I would have both of these checked. With these checked, your GPU is going to be taxed a little bit more, but these are also so your GPU can determine how to make your image quality as good as it can be. It's going to, to look at the stats and everything. It's gonna look at the pictures and it's gonna determine where it can sacrifice certain quality that's imperceptible to humans versus where it needs the quality. So you probably want the quality on your face as an example, but you don't really care about the quality in the corner of my, of my, of my camera. And that's basically what these are going to do. They're going to help pull the, the quality that doesn't matter into the spots where it does matter, especially for gameplay, where fast paced gameplay is going to be a priority for resources versus someone sitting in the corner. Now this GPU setting looks kind of strange. Well, zero GPU is what? For most people, you're gonna wanna put GPU zero here. Basically, this just denotes what GPU you're using for these settings. If you really need to know what GPU you're using or want to use, you can do control, alt, and delete, and then go to your task manager. And basically your task manager will look something like this. And so you can see right here, it says GPU zero. It tells me exactly what GPU number this is. So if you need to double check it, if you're feeling a little bit anxious, this is how you would do it. Go to your task manager. Another widely accepted thing to do is make your max B frames 
two, as long as your GPU is zero. Super important that you make sure you hit apply. Switching over to X264 for a moment. X264, again, is your CPU handling all of the encoding load. Believe it or not, your CPU, as fancy as it is, unless you have a thread ripper, is gonna be outworked by your NVIDIA graphics card. It's, I don't make the rules. I don't make the hardware. That's just how it works. So for your X264, again, same settings for your rate controller and your bit rate, except you might want to lower this bit rate a little bit. I would strongly recommend if you're doing Twitch to do a 4500. This is just a much safer bit rate to stream at, especially on a slower encoding platform like X264. If you're feeling really spicy, then you can go up higher than that, but I would not, I would just not mess with it. You could do a two keyframe interval again here. I would go down to probably a medium, just like I would in my other profile. I would not screw with any of this, but of course I use the NVENC encoder, so I'm gonna go back to that. Now, if you're one of those people that also wants to record, while you're streaming or record separately from your stream, you can hit the recording tab. And the recording tab, you're gonna start by selecting where you want this file to save. You just click browse and then you just go into your files and stuff and choose the folder that you want it to go into. I ended up making my own OBS folder on one of my drives just so I could keep things kind of organized. The next thing I would highly recommend is you go to recording format and hit MP4. The rest of these file types are a little bit harder to use in my opinion, and it's just nice to just record something and then go right to the folder and just be able to pluck it right out and not have to worry about mixing things down and stuff. Basically with the audio tracks is you just wanna make sure that the track that you're using, which can be found in the audio mixer uh, by hitting the setting wheel down there, is the one that you want to record. If you have none of them checked, well, that means that nothing is going to record. So just make sure the right ones are checked uh, if you need some extra help with that, then you can check out my tutorial that I did on setting this stuff up, and that will be in the description below. Otherwise, go to your NVENC in encoder. Again, what I would recommend, you can ignore the rest of these. I would not touch rescale output. I would not touch muxer, mixer, mooxer settings. I would not touch automatic file splitting. Uh, I would go straight down to encoders. And basically here is the difference between streaming and recording. The bitrate when you're streaming is the bitrate for uploading the video to your streaming platform, right? Over your internet connection. That same situation does not apply here. This is directly correlative to what your system can basically record at the same time. So for me, I have found that going up much higher ends up being a much better quality and it's gonna just look a whole lot better. So you can set that bit rate and I strongly encourage you to do that. If you want something that is completely ridiculous, then you can always do lossless quality. But again, I would just not recommend that. You don't really need to. And the amount of gigabytes you're gonna take up doing this is going to hurt you in the long run anyways, unless you know what you're doing. Keyframe interval, again, two, two is fine. Now, again, I would probably go as high as you can here or as low as you can here for towards the best quality because this is your recording. You don't have to worry about somebody who can't keep up internet wise and you don't have to worry about your internet being super slow. This is all your system. You're gonna to wanna to experiment and find the best quality for the parts that you have. I've chosen the best quality just because I have pretty decent computer parts. Again, same situation. I'm not worried about latency here. I'm worried about high quality. Um, and again, I can go full two passes with full resolution and that's gonna be a lot better option for me. Now, if you're streaming and recording, you're gonna to wanna to lower some of these settings down a little bit because you may not be able to handle doing everything at once. But if you're recording separately, just go go as high as you want. Like same thing with profile high, same thing with look ahead and cycle visual tuning, GPU at zero if you're, obviously I told you before, and then max of two B frames. These are all standard stuff. Uh, you just need to adjust it to what you're doing basically. Don't forget to hit apply and move on to audio. This part is really just going to be you setting up your devices. I went over this in my previous tutorial. So again, check the description or the card above and go to that tutorial for this section. I tend to choose the meter to be fast. I like to see exactly what is happening and true peak is good. So I would basically just ignore most of these settings. You don't really need to worry about it. Uh, again, hit apply if you change anything that you wanted to apply. Now, go over to the video setting. This is setting is pretty important. You're gonna notice that my base canvas is probably a whole lot higher than yours if you're just running a 1920 by 1080. And again, at this point, 
it really just matters what your monitor resolution is. If you are running like most human beings, a 1920 by 1080 monitor, then you're just gonna wanna change this to 1920 by 1080. It actually will probably be there by default. Basically, that will be your highest thing that you can run. It'll be your base. Now from your base, your scaled resolution is the thing that you're sending to your audience or to your, your capture, right? To your recording. So that could range from being your full resolution that you have as your base, or it could be something lower. Now, the reason I have 4K canvas here, but I'm outputting, basically sending to stream 1920 by 1080 is because I know that most people are not going to be able to view 4K footage on whatever connection they have. It's, we're just not there yet. Some people even go down to 720p. And the reason they do that is because it's a lot easier for your audience if, if you don't have transcoding and don't have like all the fancy mumbo jumbo settings because you're just starting out, it's a lot easier for your audience to just do 720p. But I would I would highly recommend doing the same resolution if you're doing 1080p. Your downscale filter won't even be a thing if you're doing 1080 to 1080. So you can ignore that unless you are legitimately downscaling and then Lancos is the best option, but also by cubic by linear. These are also just fine as options. Now your frame rate is really going to be dependent on what you're doing. If you're playing a video game or something that's really high speed, uh, then you're going to want to keep that probably at 60. But if you're doing something else that's not super fast and motion heavy, then doing a 30 frame rate is really totally fine. And in fact, encouraged to keep your file size down and also your stress on your system. So hit apply on those settings and then go straight over to hotkeys. Now hotkeys are fun. Hotkeys are basically these things that you can set a key bind on your keyboard or on your stream deck or whatever. It will start and stop streaming or start and stop recording or it'll do all of these fun functions and all you literally have to do, click on it and hit, I don't know, one. Number one and hit number two for stop streaming. That's literally all you need to do. If you hit those buttons while OBS is on your screen, then it will do start streaming or stop streaming, whatever. And to delete those, you can just hit this nice little X option here and just clears them. Another fun thing that it can do is you can switch scenes with them as well. So if you were to hit, we'll just say the just display scene is gonna be my comma. And we'll say the be right back scene is gonna be my period. And we'll say the gameplay scene is gonna be my slash. All right, so if I did that, then basically I could come over here and I can hit the comma. I could hit the period. I could hit the slash mark and it will basically switch the scenes. Just ignore what you saw about something being out of size, but it basically will just switch the scenes and that's super, super easy. Hotkeys are really helpful. It works best if you have a stream deck or something. All right, so now we'll go back into settings. Let me just delete those so I don't forget. I don't actually want those. You probably should choose something that makes a little bit more sense. All right, accessibility, if you need help with colors, these are really helpful for that. So you definitely can go through this accessibility if you need it. I'm glad that they include something like this. Otherwise, go to advanced. And again, this is just an area that you just don't even need to care about. Uh, there's nothing in here that's of dire importance. Sometimes you might need a stream delay, but you wanna make sure you auto automatically reconnect in case something drops out, but then comes right back up, like your, your router like resets or something. I mean, yeah, this is, this is basically, none of this is really needed. So now that you've gotten all your settings, you just hit okay and you're good to go. Most of these settings are gonna be really dependent on you. They're gonna be dependent on your system. They're gonna be dependent on your internet connection. They're gonna be dependent on quite a few factors. So make sure that you're testing them. Make sure that you ask your audience, hey, how does this look? Is it slowing up? Is it is it choppy? You can also make a separate account and you could do a stream on just that account and then you can just see on a different device how it looks. You're gonna to wanna to toy around with this stuff and find the perfect settings for you. I know there are more use cases for some of the niche settings that I didn't really stay on, um, I could do a more advanced video on those, or if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I definitely get back to those as fast as I can, and I try to help wherever possible. Otherwise, I hope this has helped you, and YouTube is probably recommending a video right here. So give it a click, and I will see you next time.